Chapter 8. Learn like your life depends on it. The funny thing about learning is that we do a ton of it in our early days in school. And for some weird reason, people think that once they finish school, they can be really successful without continuing to learn. It actually doesn't make a lot of sense when you step back and look at it. So here's the question for the chapter. How do you rate as a lifelong learner? Beautiful quote from Mark Twain. The man or woman who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. You know, we often feel sorry for illiterate people in our world, of which there's many, or people that struggle reading. But unfortunately, those of us that can, sometimes don't leverage this to our own advantage and continue to rely on skills that we would have learnt 10 or 20 years ago and then wonder why we're not successful today. The key point here is you need to double your capability every three to five years to deserve the designation of being a leader. And you heard me right, to deserve the designation of being a leader. Leadership is a very important responsibility, both in terms of the growth and development of the people that you lead and the success of the business that you're in charge of or the company that you're in charge of. And if you don't continue to stay at your best and at the top of your game, really you should step out of the way. The key is everyone can continue to learn and grow, they just gotta put some time and energy into it. So you really need to work on this if, the ideas and insights you have are based off experiences from 10 or more years ago. You have no formal learning scheduled for the next 12 months. You haven't read a book since you finished your formal education unless it was required or you were forced to. You haven't learned about a completely new topic in the past year. And learning is basically a survival tactic for you. You acquire knowledge to handle the current situations but not strategically to prepare for the future. Now in reality, if you're okay with just being average or mediocre in your career, you can ignore me. But if you want to be the best and continue to be at the top of your game, taking on more responsibility, having a bigger impact, and leading a company to somewhere great, then you need to take this one pretty seriously. The main distinction in this chapter is about what and how. Not only is it important to know what you want to learn, and those are the things that are gonna help you to grow and help you to grow in your sweet spot for sure, but the second is how. And the how you learn is a big deal that's often overlooked. So for myself, there's a few key things about how I love to learn and learn best. The biggest thing for me is experiential. So if I have a choice, I will hire an expert, a coach, a guide, whatever it happens to be in a certain area and have them work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I like to learn at a very fast pace and I like to learn by doing, so hiring someone like that is an ideal thing for me. Second thing I like to do for learning is to attend conferences where there's multiple speakers over one or two days. So I get little snippets on topics. You know, these keynote speakers give you in 60 minutes their best material. And then I can decide which ones I want to pursue further. Third is books. You know, I read a study years ago that the top leaders read 24 books a year. Yes, 24. It was actually done by Brad Smart uh, in his book, Top Grading. And I found out they were half business, half personal. Well, I'm telling you, there was no way I was reading 24 books at that time. But from that moment on, I did. But I have a great little secret that helps me to continue reading 20, 30, 40 books a year. And the secret is thanks to Mr. Steve Jobs. And it's a thing called the iPhone and iTunes. So I listen to all my books on audio. And it's a perfect way for me to do it. It feels more like a conversation with the author. And it fits very well into my travel schedule. So if you see me on any given day when I'm traveling, whether I'm in an airport, on the airplane, or even exercising in the mornings, I'll always be listening to an audiobook. Actually, the truth is, either I'm listening to an audiobook or I'm on the phone. But I use my travel time as my classroom time to get through all these audiobooks and it works extremely well for me. Doesn't matter how you do it. Maybe you like to attend classes. Maybe you like to, to watch uh, videos online or maybe you like to read books, um, and if you do, mine's a great book you could choose to read. The key is, find the way you like to do it, and then when you have the right how, it's easier to go and work on the what you need to learn. So the tool I'd like to share with you is called the Strategic Learning Grid. It's really, really simple, but the challenge is for you to fill this out right now. First of all, what are your top strategic initiatives for the next three to five years? whether it's the top initiatives in your work or maybe some personal goals. Second is, what do you want to master to support this initiative? Thirdly, 
How would you like to learn? What would be the way you would like to learn this? And then when? This is not rocket science, but it's a simple way to think about your learning and allow yourself to be clear on what you need to learn and be more likely to do it because you're going to do it a way that you like. So the challenge for you. Number one, figure out the number one thing you want to learn this year in work, self, or in life. And then two, figure out how you're going to learn it. And if you want to use kind of a tip out of my playbook is, and who can help you to learn it. So what you want to learn, how you want to learn it, and who can help you with it. If you go back to the tools, and again, the tools are available at lawrenceandco.com, and they're also covered off in chapter 17 of the book. If you go and look at your plan for every quarter, I'd recommend that at least one of your goals in work, in self, or in life is around learning to ensure you don't get stale and you continue to get a little bit better every single quarter. In summary, I could have also called this chapter, Learn So You Stay Relevant. If you want to be relevant and effective as a leader, you need to continue to learn and grow. And there's some tools and other techniques in the chapter you can read that'll help you figure out the best way that you can make it happen.